today I'm here to share with you my progress on my slip stravaganza shawl. I am through section five and also a spinning project. This is Pineapple Knits, a video cast about knitting, spinning, and weaving. You can connect with me on social media at Pineapple Yarn, and you can connect with me on my website at pineappleyarn.com. Thank you so much for joining me again this week, and if this is your first time joining me, welcome! I'm so happy you're here. I'm coming to you today from coastal South Carolina, where I think I think we're experiencing our last 80 degree day. <laughs> we might have another 80 degrees tomorrow, but fall is definitely here. We definitely have some cooler temperatures in the forecast. And so I had a big woolly shawl to wear today and it's not gonna happen. It is way too warm. <laughs> we're just enjoying the fall and enjoying the variable temperature changes it's always fun i guess for me i'm kind of a weather nerd i love it but i love seeing um, the direction the temperatures are changing and the weather and yeah so it's really fun this week has been completely focused on my slip stravaganza and clue three included sections four and five and so if you don't want a spoiler on those sections, go ahead and skip forward. But for those of you who don't mind seeing what I knit on this week, I will go ahead and show you right now. So here's my progress so far. It is really growing quite a bit. It is about 400, I think it's over 480 stitches at this point. And this, section right here is the section I worked on this week and I will give you a close-up in a moment. Um, this is the, this is where I started. This was a I-cord cast on, so all of the edges in this shawl either have the um, I-cord cast on or an I-cord as you go, maybe like an apply, I don't think that's an applied I-cord. I-cord as you go, I don't know. <laughs> But it, the edges are always uh, just so wonderful on these shawls. And I should say, this is the Slip Stravaganza Mystery Knit Along by Stephen West. He's a wonderful designer. I never have enough wonderful things to say about his patterns because they are just so creative and inspirational and fun and challenging. And so this week uh, we had sections four and five. And I do want to point out that I am sharing this with you on two long, long needles. Otherwise it would not be stretched out this far. So these are sections four and five and it is using the main color as well as contrast color number three, which I was really excited about because I love this like deep coral, kind of a deep neon coral color. And then section five was very interesting. It was all of these triangles all along the edge. And these are with contrast color number two. And they are created using, using short rows. And then you break the yarn in between each one. So let me give you a close up of these. So section four is called checks, I believe. And it's this beautiful main color in the background. And it really allows contrast color number three to shine. And then those yarns were broken and all the way along the shawl these short row triangles were formed. And then the yarn broken on those. So I've said twice now that the yarn is broken and I'm saying that because I have to weave in all the ends. <laughs> it's a lot of ends. But while I'm here standing up, I will show you how large this shawl is so far. 
And this is unblocked, obviously. But this is about the middle right here in my wingspan, which y'all know I'm not that big, so. It's not huge, huge, but it is, for me, it's quite large right now. So this is turning out to be just a very interesting knit. I'm using US size three, which is 3.25 millimeter and is also a size smaller than recommended in the pattern as I am a loose knitter. Yeah, so far so good. I'm excited to see how the next section is. This will be the last clue coming up. And this clue didn't take me too long. I was able to sneak in some more knitting time on Saturday as the clues are released on Friday. And so through the weekend, I always have a real big knitting push when I am knitting his mystery knit alongs because I wanna make sure in case the week has something crazy happen, I just wanna make sure that I actually get it moving along. This has been such a great mystery knit along. I'm so happy that I joined it and I'm keeping up with it, which is, you know, it's easy to get off track. And I'm also using a kit that I dyed for it. So this is pineapple yarn and these were all one of a kind colorways. These were the slip stravaganza kits. This is the main color. It's this warm caramel color. Contrast color number one is this really pretty kind of peachy color. Section two or contrast color two is this pretty orange kind of a creamsicle color. Looks like I have a yarn end from contrast color number three here. And then there's contrast color number three. And so I knit a swatch to see if I liked all these colors together. This was my original swatch and I loved them, love them, love them together. So yeah, so far so good. I have been enjoying it. It will be nice by the end when it's done. It'll just be nice to have something off the needles. I'm sure the blocking of the shawl will be very interesting. <laughs> I had to put up my hair. I was absolutely driving me crazy. It's so warm today. <laughs> so that's the slip stravaganza shawl. It is just so, it's been so much fun. And um, yeah, it will be really fun to finish it, see where this next clue goes. The next clue is I think it has 54, 50 some stitch markers. Not really sure why, but it will be a very interesting section, I'm sure. <laughs> so those sections in the slip stravaganza actually weren't too time consuming. Plus I had that extra bit of time on Saturday to knit. And so I was able to sneak in some spinning, which I've just been, it's so funny, you know, when you, can't do a certain craft, you really just cannot wait to be able to do that. This was a fiber pack of samples and odds and ends from Hedgehog Fibers, and it included lots of, at least one of my bags included a ton of tweed. And so this is very tweedy as far as like little neps, and then also, uh, sari silk. There's a lot of sari silk. So this won't be as consistent as I would want. But at the same time, when I plied this, because these are all plied up, when I plied this, I was pleasantly surprised actually how consistent it was, uh, despite the the tweedy bits, I guess. Um, I did have quite a bit left on one bobbin and so I chain plied it and I always love to chain ply. And I think that if I spun finer yarns and I didn't like barber pulling so much, I would chain ply all the time. But let me give you a close up. So this is what the largest bobbin looks like right now. Is 
it's not consistent by any means, but I'm pretty happy with it. We'll see how the color distribution is, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And then here's the other one. And obviously this isn't going to look as pretty on the bobbin as the other one because it's just the, the last part of it. This has a different consistency and that's because it is chain plied. And this was a part of, this was a fiber that actually didn't have any tweed in it and so it was a lot more consistent. And so I said I would talk about color distribution for these, for this spin. What I did is for the first ply, this is a two ply, so the first ply has um, short-ish sections of different colors. And so I took out all the tweed that I could find. I, I basically used all the fiber except for anything that I thought had a silk content. I just don't really care to spin silk right now. And so I took everything that had everything except for the silk content and I, I split it lengthwise into thin pieces but then also split those pieces into maybe eight inch to one foot pieces and so I have lots of color changes on the first ply so I, I tried to go kind of like turquoise to fuchsia to white that's kind of the predominant colors there was a ton of blues and turquoises in the spin and or in the fiber and so what i did with the next ply with the second ply i kept the length of the fibers as much as possible and also i had saved some of the fiber and i really like this fiber and actually i have this club in my fiber stash right now. I haven't spun it, which I'm really excited about, but I had a tweed fiber that is kind of a, it's kind of an off-white, natural maybe, or gray, and it has lots of tweedy, you know, different tweed bits in it, but that's what I applied a lot of this with. That second half has a lot of that, and it has a lot of like white neps and bits and pieces of viscose <laughs> tweed in it and so yeah I'm so excited to get this skeined up I didn't have enough time before uh, the episode today to get it skeined up to show you but I will show you once I've washed it and have finished and have some finished uh, measurements because I don't know how much this is going to bloom either this right really might blossom even though I did spin it with a short backward draft with smoothing. And so I was trying to smooth the fibers as much as possible to get them as consistent to each other as possible. And so if one fiber seemed like it might be a little more of a woolen prep than another fiber, I just wanted everything to be as consistent as possible. And so, you know, in hindsight, maybe I should have just spun all the tweed together and spun all of the, you know, if something was 100% merino, maybe I should have just done that, you know, the smoother fibers all together. But I wanted to just make this super random and fun and um, a little more of like the art side of yarn because I plan on weaving with this. And so for me, I love hand woven objects that have some more character in them. Um, I like the inconsistencies. I like kind of the chunkiness. And so, yeah, that's what these will end up being most likely. And then this little chain plied section, I will just, um, I will just skein that up into its own little skein and I don't know what I'll use it for. I didn't realize this when I was spinning because I spin in the evenings. It's kind of dark, honestly, where I spin. And so I didn't realize this, but there is a sparkle in this fiber. And I think there might be some Firestar nylon in it as well. And so it really has a gorgeous shimmer and sparkle. I love it. It's so pretty. So hopefully I will be able to get some photos of that because that's, I think that's so pretty. So 
I was so pleasantly surprised that I had time to finish this up this week. I kind of have been binge watching Rachel of Welford Pearls and she's such a wonderful spinning inspiration and um, yeah, so if you're interested at all in spinning or if you just like to see, to watch the process, if you like a good podcast, I would highly recommend her. She's on YouTube and she really has been so inspiring and such a wonderful teacher for spinning. And so I've been watching a lot of her episodes and, and her back episodes. She has years of videos, which is wonderful when you find that <laughs> and you have the time to watch. But she's, yeah, so I, wa I have been going to her back episodes and watching them. And it's just so inspiring to, to see her progress as a spinner. And um, so, yeah, that's why I was really itching to spin. I was really excited to uh, have the time to do that this week. So that is all I've been working on of this week. I have no weaving again. I will in the future, especially with Slip Stravaganza finished because I'm really wanting to get back on the loom and finish my waffle weave washcloths that I was working on. So keep an eye out for that in the next couple weeks. I will have some weaving content for you. But other than that, uh, with work, with pineapple yarn, I have been working so much on the advent calendars. Most of them are all packed up. I do have a little bit of the full skeins to dye and put in the packages, but they will be going out in the next week. So I'm so excited for you to receive them. And as always, I'm so appreciative of all of your orders and your support of my shop. It means so much to me and my family. I also plan a very small shop update on Friday at 8 p.m. I will send out a newsletter with this information, so make sure you're subscribed if you go to pineappleyarn.com, enter your email address at the top of the page, you will be subscribed. I send out a newsletter every two weeks, and this one will be kind of an irregular newsletter, so I will be putting one out in the next couple days, and then also next week I hope to have a larger shop update. But this shop update this week will be so fun because it is extras from my club colorways from the last year and so if you have been around for a year you know that i've had my clubs going on for a little more than a year now every now and again i will round out a dye pot by throwing some extra skeins in and that's what i will have available and it's just so fun to see all of the different club colorways from the past year. So go ahead and check those out on Friday. The update will be this Friday, October 30th at 8 p.m. Eastern. This will be the only time this year I will have these really cool club colorways and so definitely check those out. Other than that, that's all I have for you this week. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like the podcast, I would love if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I will catch you again next week. Until then, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.